Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the book on being a Christian by Professor Hans Kuhn. We're going to continue into part three. We're going to take a look at uh, pages 255 to 265, and we're going to look at uh, a very good lesson on the radicalism of love in Jesus Christ. Let's begin with block one and take a look at uh, the love of God and man. We read that uh, we are to love both God and man. Love becomes the criterion of a person's whole being. But Jesus gives to God absolute primacy. And he claims man as a whole, including man's innermost core being. So it's all about the primacy of God and the core of man. One must love God with the whole heart, the whole soul, and all of the mind. But that love cannot exist without love of man. And this is the person who needs me here and now. We must enact the courageous deed, take part in concrete love. Therefore, God as absolute primacy and the core of man in dedication to God equals a concrete and courageous love. And in the scriptures, this is called love of the neighbor, which is the yardstick of our love of God. We are to love our neighbor as ourself, to accept the other's standpoint, to be alert and to be open to our fellow human being. And so it's all about the absolute primacy of loving God with the whole heart, the whole soul, and the whole mind. But it's measured, and it does not exist without love of our fellow human beings. So that's the theoretical block one that defines uh, what it means to love God and love neighbor. Now we're going to look at the concrete aspect of this and concretely we have two Greek concepts that we need to take up and both are positive concepts. We're not going to measure them one against the other says Professor Kuhn because Eros love always gets kind of degraded and it should not. He says it should not be degraded because Agape and Eros both are part of the Christian ministry. So let's go to block two and take a look at the concrete aspect of love as agape and eros. Love of enemies. Jesus said to love your enemies. In Judaism, hatred of enemies was permissible. In fact, at the Qumran community, they even commanded hatred toward outsiders. But with Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, there is an originality. Love of neighbor should know no bounds. It's love of neighbor without boundaries. The neighbor can confront us in any human being. This is, con this is Christ's concrete, practical universalism, where all of the lines of demarcation are broken down. And uh, Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan illustrates this teaching. In the Sermon on the Mount we read, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So block two, our concrete conclusion, is going to be note three, love of enemies and the neighbor without boundaries means taking up a concrete, practical universalism. Agape love is completely open to other persons. Eros love is love that seeks its own. However, here's the key point that Professor Kuhn wants us to take in. Agape does not exclude eros. Agape self-giving love and service and eros, desire, both go together. Eros is the humanized side of agape. Agape should not be dehumanized. And I think it's an excellent point for our concrete conclusion that agape self-giving 
service type of love, a ministry love, is still coupled with the desire of our heart for others that they be taken up within the community of Christ. We desire that they join the community of Christ, that they become one in the body of Christ with us. So agape includes eros. They both go together, and I think that's an excellent concrete conclusion. So the theoretical in block one gave us love of neighbor, and love of neighbor is what it means to have a concrete and courageous love. And we have to love our neighbor because that is the measure of our love of God with our whole heart, soul, and mind. Concretely, that is agape plus eros together. And therefore, we can now take a look at our conclusion. And our conclusion is going to be that Jesus radicalizes love, and by doing so, he radicalizes law. Okay, we're going to look at both of those concepts. Block 3, Jesus stood for a radicalism of love which abbreviated three concepts. Forgiveness, reconciling with one's brother. Humility, having the courage to serve and get involved in a reciprocal service on the part of all. And renunciation of all that hinders our readiness for God, including any right of power we might have. Saul also involves a radicalism of law. The Ten Commandments, pass through the triad of canceled, preserved, and elevated in Jesus Christ to higher righteousness. I'll say it again. The law is canceled, preserved, and elevated to higher righteousness in Jesus Christ. The higher righteousness is expressed in the Sermon on the Mount. We have a new freedom from the law in the Sermon on the Mount. So it is fulfillment of the law by elevating it to new righteousness. So the conclusion to the lesson is block three, note three. Radicalism of law and radicalism of I mean love and law both equals a newfound solidarity. Through Jesus' word and his deed, our situation has changed. God's cause and man's cause find a dialectical expression. New possibilities are opened up. We have a new life in the freedom of love toward God and neighbor. And it's a free love because all legalism has ended. All legalism, all legalistic moralism, all legalism has ended in Jesus Christ. We've been elevated to a higher righteousness in Jesus Christ. And that higher righteousness ex is expressed in the Sermon on the Mount. And so our triad, our recall triad, would be the uh, courageous love of block one, the concrete love of agape and eros in block two, and the Sermon on the Mount as radicalized love in block three. That's really where we are taken. He takes us full circle. He takes us right to the Sermon on the Mount, which he has in previous lessons as well. That is his emphasis because he calls that the logia, the revelatory sayings of Christ are the Sermon on the Mount. They're taken out of Q, They're taken out of the Q document. And we've been studying his Christology, and all along he's been talking about the Logia. The Logia, the Logia, the Logia, the Q document, the revelatory sayings of Christ. Which is what the church had in the first century. The early church had Q. That was their early document, the early document for the church that they added to the Torah, prophets, wisdom literature. They added Q, the revelatory sayings of Christ. Later we 
come to call that Q. We refer to that to the Q document. But Professor Kuhn reminds us that the Sermon on the Mount is a uh, an expression of those revelatory sayings of Jesus Christ. They are in red in your scriptures. They are Christ's own words. They reflect what his miraculous deeds reflected. They reflect the radicalized law and the radicalized love that now gets new definition and becomes a new righteousness in Jesus Christ. Where love of neighbor is a yardstick for our love of God. Love of neighbor becomes a yardstick for our love of God. And we love God with our whole heart, our whole soul, and our whole mind. And we express that concrete way through love of neighbor. That's how we express our love toward God through our love of neighbor. And that means we love with agape, self-giving, sacrificial love, of course. But it also means that we abbreviate under that the eros of desire. Because desire is not erased, but it is given direction by agape. So agape provides the direction for eros, desire. Agape and eros go together in Christian ministry. When we go out of ourselves to bring forth and to participate in God's kingdom revealed to us through Jesus Christ. So agape and eros both become the concrete aspects of this uh, love of God and love of neighbor. And that is radical. It's a radical approach to the law. It's a radical approach to love because it says minister and live according to the Sermon on the Mount, which surpasses legalistic interpretations of the law. It's all about that pure interiority, that pure inner core, the imprint of the heart, and your motivational base, and what you really stand for. And out of that motivational base, out of that core that is imprinted by the person of Jesus Christ, that will affect and imprint Sophia wisdom of the heart, which will imprint Gnosis wisdom of the mind, which, which will imprint praxis outgoing practical ministry. All of it becomes tied together, and Professor Kuhn ties it all together in this lesson in the Sermon on the Mount. For him, the law is surpassed in the Sermon on the Mount. For him, love is surpassed on the Sermon on the Mount. If you look at Block 3, Note 2, he even mentions it in the book. He even says this is the Hegelian triad. He says that basically law and love pass through the Hegelian triad. And that is the Hegelian triad, canceled, preserved, yet elevated. You pass through negation, but you preserve that which is to be elevated, and then you have elevation. So he says the law and love, those two concepts pass through the Hegelian triad of canceled, preserved, and elevated. We're not throwing out the law, we are preserving that which needs to be preserved, but raising it up to a non-legalistic new righteousness, deeper righteousness. So we're not negating it completely. We are negating legalism, pre preserving the pure intent of the law. And then we are elevating it through Jesus Christ and especially through the Logia, which is encapsulated in the Sermon on the Mount that elevates the law and it elevates it to something called radicalized love. 
law is elevated to something called radicalized agape and eros love. And that's the way that he pulls it all together. And I think that Professor Kuhn does a great job of pulling it all together in a very cohesive snapshot, a very cohesive image. We can truly see that formula, the elevation of law as a higher righteousness expressed in the logia of the Sermon on the Mount, which becomes concrete in a twofold ministry of agape and eros. Through a twofold ministry of agape and eros, both, both together. Agape is the direction of a self sacrificial love of the neighbor to bring forth kingdom of God, to bring forth true identity for others and for the self. And that includes desire. Eros is included, it's just abbreviated under agape. Agape is prioritized, but eros is included. So beautiful, cohesive presentation. One of the best presentations on law and love that I think I've ever seen. Very good teaching by Professor Kuhn. That's going to wrap up pages 255 to 265. And we will move on to page 266 in the next lesson.